everybody. We're going to talk about Christmas today, the story of Christmas. Reverend David Essel here, all faith minister, of course, non-denominational minister, and I'm so passionate and excited about this message. You can tell me I'm moving around already. I'm going to let it out, baby. Can I get an amen? So, you know, when we think about Christmas, one of the things I like to do with sermons is I like to think about, like, what song could I relate to the sermon? What song can I relate to whatever the point of the sermon is? And today, it's about the birth of Christ. It's about the story of Christmas. It's about what Christians and non-Christians around the world will be celebrating here fairly soon. And the song that I chose is the Ave Maria. And if you've heard it sung by anyone from Celine Dion to Pavarotti, it is just magnificent. Go online and listen to it. Ave Maria. Just pick anyone. It doesn't matter. And listen. It is beautiful. And what that is, is that's the prayer of Hail Mary. That's Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed in the womb of thy womb, Jesus. It's, it's, it's like, oh my Lord, think about it. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And, and if you remember this and the whole story of Christmas is that it's about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And I want you to take this message away with this today, is that, you know, the story of Christmas and the story of Mary and Joseph and Jesus and the wise men and everything else, it's about ordinary people that have chosen to accept the message of God, the spirit of God, the soul of God that's been given to them, just like it's been given to you, just like it's been given to me, and doing something with it. Did you realize that? Did you realize that's what I believe is the most incredible message of Christmas, of the birth of Christ? Is that, you know, when, when Christ came into this world, he didn't come in in a kingdom, did he? He didn't come in in anything other than a manger. But look, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. So let's back up. So this is the message. This is the sermon for today. It's about the story of ordinary people being tapped by God and doing extraordinary things. Let's start with Mary. Mary was an ordinary Jewish girl living in a small Jewish village who one day was approached by the Archangel Gabriel and said, you have been. And the Hail Mary is what he said to Mary. Hail Mary. That's what he said. We, we beseech you. We call upon you. God has sent me to call upon you and tell you that in your womb will be the Messiah and his name will be Jesus. Now, you can imagine this ordinary woman, this ordinary young girl, as a matter of fact, going, what? I, I don't understand what you're saying. You know, like, how could you even comprehend that? This ordinary girl being chosen, like she's going, who am I? Who am I? But in the Bible, it even says the last phrase of her response to Gabriel is, let it be. In other words, and so it is. You know, even in her shock and dismay of who are you, this angel, and why am I being chosen? She was able to go there and say, let it be. If that is God's will, let it be. And then the next person in this incredible scenario is, is Joseph. You know, and he finds out that she's pregnant, and they're not even married yet. And back in that time, that meant instant stoning if he were to accuse her of having sex with someone and getting pregnant. But somehow, some way, he believed her. And after he believed her to be true, he had a dream in which the Archangel Gabriel appeared to him and told him of the majesty of his path now. Here is your path, Joseph. You know, we want you to take it. This is a huge one. This is a biggie. And he's probably sitting there thinking as an ordinary carpenter, what? How did I get myself into this? How did I get chosen by God? So we have Mary, an ordinary girl being chosen by God. We have Joseph, an ordinary man being chosen by God. And then we have this whole scenario of people around them. The three wise men, ordinary wise men who were Gentiles, as a matter of fact, they weren't even Jews, who listened to a prophecy written years and years ago about a Messiah coming to a town and following the three stars, and they decided to trust in it. Ordinary wise men, ordinary astrologers who decided to trust in this prophecy and just follow it wherever the light went, wherever the stars ended up lighting, they were going to believe it and they were going to go there and they were going to be there. You know, we have the shepherd that Mary and Joseph passed on the way to the manger whose whole words to them was, you know, everyone has a special gift inside. Ordinary shepherd, reflecting that to Mary, Mary's going, oh my Lord, I know that to be true. I've got something outrageously special inside me. So we have all this ordinariness, and then where is Christ born? In an ordinary manger. 
Do you get the link here? Do you get the link? You know, one of the things that I feel that's happening here is God is saying, I know that you think you're ordinary. I know you think you're ordinary Mary and Joseph and the wise men and the shepherd, but you're not. And that's what I feel is being told to us. You know, as you watch this, you are far from ordinary. You are extraordinary. You are magical. You are a child of God here to use the gifts given to make a huge difference in this world, just like Mary, Joseph, the wise men, and, and Jesus did. Now think about this. The story even gets better. Jesus Christ is an ordinary guy for the first 30 years of his life. You know, like, there's nothing extraordinary. He does what he's told. He's a good boy, right? I guess, I think it was at 13 when he was in the temple and he was able to discuss with these Jewish theologians and priests, like, these really intense topics. Remember that story? We'll tell it another time. But, like, that was the first sort of breakthrough that we see in the Bible that he might have been, you know, extraordinary. But still, he was an ordinary kid. And then at 30, he begins his work, his ministry. And then, of course, at 33, he's gone from this world. But then again, as you well know the story, he resurrects and he is now with us. And, and he's within everyone. This is the coolest thing in the world. And I want you to remember that. He is with you right now. He is with me right now. He is with all of us right now. And through the words in the Bible and through the teachings, we know this is true. And these teachings are for everyone, ladies and gentlemen. They're not just for Christians. They're for everyone to get their head around and see that I might have lived up to this point in ordinary life, but I'm far from ordinary. That's the message I want you to take away from the birth of Christ, is that you have something special. Maybe you've tapped into it, maybe you haven't, but it's there. It is there. You know, a, a lot of times during sermons, I like to tie it into current movies and to see how this reflects what's going on in today's world. Of course, tying it into the song, Ave Maria, Hail Mary, is just so absolutely beautiful. If you haven't seen the movie 2012, which ironically enough is about the end of the world, but go see it. It's, it's a wonderfully entertaining movie. But there's a part of it, and I won't tell you the whole thing, but how this ordinary, unemployed author, this out-of-work author, taps into his spirit, taps into his consciousness, his soul, his God energy, and does some miraculous things to save some people's lives. I mean, this is what I'm saying. You know, like, we think we're ordinary, but we're not, ladies and gentlemen. We are so far from ordinary. And I want to read something from the Bible here that I, I think will help us with this as well. And it's out of Romans chapter 15. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. What a great message of the Christmas holidays for everyone of all faiths or no faiths. It doesn't matter to me. The fact that you're with us is awesome. Can I get an amen? <laughs> if I can help you or if you want more information, we'll be posting more sermons online as often as we can. And if I can also fill in as an interim or a traveling minister at your congregation, if you're in need, I would absolutely love to do that. I'm Reverend David Essel, wishing you the most amazing day. For more information, go to talkdavid.com. Have a fantastic day. Now, I'm a one person crew here so I'm going to get really really close as I go ahead and turn this off and tell you can I get an amen have an awesome day bye bye now